Today's question is, what does it mean to make a covenant with your eyes? In this video, I'll answer that question from a biblical perspective. Then afterwards, as always, I'll share some helpful resources. So stick around until the end. In Job chapter 31, verse 1, Job says that he had made a covenant with his eyes, a promise not to look at something. I made a covenant with my eyes not to look lustfully at a young woman. It is clear that Job was speaking about his personal purity. In defending his conduct, Job says that he worked diligently not to look at young women in impure ways. Job chapter 31 includes Job's final defense of his integrity. Here he lists many positive things he had done to walk with integrity before the Lord. Part of living a life above reproach is avoiding lust, and an integral part of avoiding lust is controlling what the eyes are allowed to view. In Job chapter 31, verse 4, Job offers the reason he would not look at women in sinful ways. Does he not see my ways and count my every step? Job understood that God sees everything we do. There is no way to hide anything from God, including our sin. If we are looking at things that we should not look at, God knows. Job sought to live his life accordingly. The principle of making a covenant with our eyes is a good one for us in this day of rampant pornography. Like Job, we are to live knowing that God sees everything we do. This includes our thoughts and actions. From entertaining lustful thoughts to stealing lascivious looks to other sexual actions outside of marriage. The idea that God sees everything we do should serve to purify us. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 13. Jesus also addressed the issue of how we use our eyes. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Matthew chapter 5 verses 27 through 28. The Pharisees of Jesus' time focused on pure living, including keeping the Ten Commandments and its command not to commit adultery. However, Jesus spoke not only to the command, but also to the motivation behind the command. God desires purity of heart. God's standard is higher than ours. It's not just the letter of the law that God cares about, but the spirit in which it's kept. James chapter 1 verse 27 says that religion that God accepts as pure and faultless includes keeping oneself from being polluted by the world. Part of being unpolluted in this world would have to involve maintaining a pure thought life. Sexual purity is an important aspect of the Christian life. Do not offer any part of yourself to sin as an instrument of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and offer every part of yourselves to him as an instrument of righteousness. Romans chapter 6 verse 13. Every part of yourself includes the eyes. In many ways, our eyes function as gates to the mind, and we must be vigilant gatekeepers to avoid admitting sin. Job made a promise to himself to guard his eyes around women, and his example is worthy of emulation. Want to learn more? Subscribe so you don't miss the next video. Visit gotquestions.org for more great content and check out the details section below this video. There's one resource I recommend along with several related questions. If you'd like to learn about Bible Munch or if you're interested in bite-sized devotionals, subscribe to Bible Munch on YouTube. It's linked right here. Now remember, you got questions, the Bible has answers, and we'll help you find them.